Hey everybody, David Fine here from Watch Your Lip. Guys, we are going to give you seven tips on how to become a successful fisherman in Chukaluski, the 10,000 Islands. If you've been there before and you've mastered that area, then great. This video is more for guys that are just starting. It's a huge area and it's very, very daunting when you're trying to figure out how to fish this place. And over the last three years, our friends and I have gone on an annual trip where we take five boats and it ranges between 12 and 14 anglers per trip. And so we've got five boats, 14 anglers. We've got over 600 hours experience now fishing in Chukaluski. And the first year was a disaster. We hardly caught anything. Uh, and then little by little, we're getting better each year. And we had a pretty good year this year. And we want to share seven tips with you about how to be successful all right, guys, tip number one for being a successful fisherman in Chukaluski, guys, bigger is not always better. That's right. You know, a lot of times we fish with large bait, large lures, trying to catch big fish. And there, I'm sure there's a place and a time for that in Chukaluski. But here's our experience. Bigger is not better. In fact, this past year, we started using smaller artificial lures, smaller jigs, little bucktail jigs, and that kind of thing. And we actually caught more fish on small artificial jigs than we did with using live bait. I mean, we had live mullet, we had finger mullet, we had big mullet, we had live shrimp, we had mud minnows, we had mangrove crabs, and all of, all of those got hit, don't get me wrong. But using small lures, small artificial lures, put us on the fish and we were very successful this year using very tiny bucktail jigs. Tip number two, guys, to be a successful fisherman in Chukaluski, you got to have structure to find these fish, okay? Mostly that's going to mean mangrove roots. They love hanging out in mangroves. Redfish, snook, uh, trout are using the roots of the mangrove trees to hide from bigger predators, from sharks and ospreys and pelicans and porpoises that are always trying to eat these fish. So they're hiding in the roots using them for protection, but they're also using those roots to find food because that's where the smaller fish hang out as well. And they got mangrove crabs that are crawling up and down the roots and so on. So you got to find structure, use the mangrove roots where the roots are going down into the water. Okay. That's a, a very good place to find fish. And that might be obvious. Another form of structure is actually uh, oyster beds. So oyster beds are the, you know, not easy to find unless it's low tide, you can see them, but wherever there's these shales and you can, if you have a good uh, chart map on your GPS navigation system, a lot of times it'll show you where the shales are and those are good areas to target redfish and sea trout. And so those are good areas for that. Tip number three for being the, a successful Chukaluski fisherman, uh, get out there early. I can't stress that enough. Right as a sun is coming up over the horizon, for that two hours, the first two hours of daylight and the last two hours of daylight are definitely going to be your most productive times for fishing. And we've we've been at this now for a couple years, three years. And um, this past time, we spent a whole lot of time in the middle of the day and we caught a couple fish, a couple trout here and there. But the action turns on at dusk and dawn. That's been our experience. Uh, and I'm, I'm sticking to that one, you know, and plus it's more comfortable to fish in the morning and afternoons instead of in the heat of the day. Tip number four, guys, for being a successful fisherman in Chukaluski in the 10,000 Islands. And this one might be a surprise to some of you, but dead shrimp are just as effective as live shrimp. Yeah, that's right. Um, we bought a lot of live shrimp in this last trip and we caught a few fish with them. Don't get me wrong, live shrimp are awesome, but they are very expensive. And so using frozen shrimp and putting them on jig heads and using them in that way, catch just as many fish as the live ones do and you'll save a lot of money. Tip number five, when you start to catch catfish, I mean, if you catch one catfish, don't necessarily move, but if you catch two catfish, three catfish, do yourself a favor, pick up your anchor, pick up your, your trolling motor, and just move to another spot because 
your catfish are going to destroy your fishing and they're going to eat your bait. You're going to be frustrated and that's not where you want to fish. Okay, just move. If the catfish find you, find another spot. Uh, trust me, you will catch a lot of catfish in Chukaluski and you know, they will be mixed in with some of the other fish. But if you're just started catching catfish, 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 that means that they've, they've found you and you, you don't want to be found by uh, the hordes of catfish in Chukaluski. And that is a helpful tip for you. Make sure you listen to that one. Tip number six, Chukaluski, uh, especially if you're on a budget and you own a cast net, um, I would say instead of buying a lot of live bait, you can actually go out and catch your live bait and it's not that big a deal. And one of the things you can do with a cast net is go out to the outer ends of the uh, region before you get out into the bay and you'll find these muddy, sandy beaches. Well, when you go up on those muddy, sandy beaches, use your cast net and find yourself some mud minnows. Mud minnows are these little fat, little molly looking things that hang out on the beaches in this area and they are fantastic live bait. In fact, we've caught some really good fish on them. The other bait that you can catch anywhere you go in Chukaluski are mangrove crabs. So mangrove crabs are a, a crab about that big. They're, they're really dark in color and they hang out on the roots of the mangrove. So when the tide rises, the mangrove crabs come out of their little holes and crawl up the roots of the mangrove trees. You can actually catch them pretty easy. When they see you, they kind of go around the other side of the <laughs> of the root, but you can just reach around and grab them. They've got little pinchers, and, but they don't bite too hard. So you can actually grab them with your hands and, and put them in a live bait bucket. And they are phenomenal bait. In fact, your redfish, your black drum, your sheep's head, your mangrove snapper, even your snook, well, that's why that's what they're eating back in the mangroves. They're waiting for these mangrove crabs to fall into the water, and that's what they're eating. They love mangrove crabs, and um, they're easy to catch. You can catch a bunch of them, and they're great for catching fish. So use mangrove crabs, mud minnows, pretty much can catch you any fish that you want in Chukaluski. Tip number seven for Chukaluski fishing, you want to be successful, bring a trolling motor. Bring a trolling motor, and, and if you want to go out and you bring your boat, you can try and anchor, great, go for it. But I'm telling you, get a trolling motor if you don't have one already, and it will make your life so much easier to quietly sneak up on these fish and present your bait in a natural way without scaring them. That is a absolute must, and, and if you can get one of these cool spot lock ones that has the spot lock capabilities, the anchor lock, um, these new, these new Minn Kotas are so nice. Uh, they, it's a game changer when you're using that technology. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love those new trolling motors with the remote control and the anchor lock technology. So uh, that is tip number seven. And finally, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. All right. If you have a GPS, I, I, would, I would strongly advise not going to Chukaluski without a good navigation system on your boat or kayak. Uh, make sure you have that because you'll get lost. It's a safety thing. Um, you find your way back. But also, if you have a good chart on your navigation system, it'll show you where the depths are in each of the little channels in between the islands. And what you want to do is you got to find the three, these three things that make up a good spot to try and catch fish. You need where the depth comes right up to, you know, deeper water comes right up to the mangroves. That gives the mangrove roots a chance to go into the water and provide that uh, structure for the fish to hide in. So you want depth where it comes right up to the mangrove roots. You want current, current that's pushing up against the mangrove roots. And you want a point. So when you look for a little point that comes out on your chart where there's a, a mangrove island and it comes out to a point and you got current pushing up on that point and you've got depth that comes right up to that point, that is gonna be a great spot for all of your big yummy fish that you wanna catch, your redfish, your snook, your trout, that kind of thing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're gonna to continue to go to Choco because it is a blast and um, stay tuned for more videos because we have seven things not to do coming up next. So guys, take care, stay safe. 
Make sure you are safe out in Chukaluski. Take care now. Watch you later.